You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Welcome in Wellness with your host, Barbara Rose. Barbara is a catalyst for change with a connection between health, movement, prayer, and meditation. She has faith in people's ability to heal themselves through support and guidance. So please welcome the host of Welcome in Wellness, Barbara Rose. Good evening. I am your host. My name is Barbara Rose of Ro- of my business is Rose Wellness Network, and I'm here on Welcome in Wellness, live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm so excited to be here, and I have a caller on the line. Uh, we're going to get to her later. Her name is Teresa McKee. She was a guest last week as well. So I'm excited about our, our program today. First of all, I'm going to talk about my intention. The intention of this radio show is to inspire, empower, and guide people, especially women, to welcome in wellness. We will explore ways to welcome in and allow more wellness into our lives. Health is much more than the elimination of dis-ease. Real health requires a solid, stable foundation of wellness, holistic self-care, and nurturing and nourishing support. There is hope for your health. Real health and well-being are easier to attain and maintain with a solid component of holistic self-care. I'd like to share with you some everyday things to welcome in wellness, which is some of my practices. Every day, I give give gratitude every day Take a life-affirming action every day. Nurture and nourish yourself every day with something just for you. And my favorite one, wiggle and giggle as much as you can. So everyday practices are, after they become a habit, they become easier and you will feel more joy in your life. So these are everyday things to welcome and wellness. And again, I am Barbara Rose, and I'm your tour guide on this educational and uh, proactive journey of awareness into health. Each show, we will explore a different component and aspect of holistic self-care through conscious conversation with experts in those areas. The context of today's program and topic is bridging from self-care or stress care to simple self-care. Last week, we talked about stress care, the first component of real self-care. Why these topics are so important to me is because of my passion is to enlighten, inspire, and dare people to take charge of their lives, being healthier, healthier, happier, and heart-centered. So the first component I'm going to share with you is about water. The water story, the importance of water and its impact on wellness. And my practice, my current practice and background as a nephrology nurse, my proactive goal is to educate people to support kidney function, encouraging water intake and good nutrition and much more, of course, but those are the two basic ones. When kidney function is less than 15%, dialysis is usually started. Then the goal shifts from thrive to survive. Patients are required once they start dialysis to curb water and nutrient intake as the kidneys no longer rid the body of any excess water and waste. 
So exploring the water, uh, exploring optimal water intake for you is a really a proactive measure. And there's no one size fits all, but we'll give you guidelines here. So the importance of water, it's necessary for every part of the body. Every process requires water. Uh, water. It's really, you can think of it as a energy transport system. Thus, when one is lacking in water or dehydrated, it can cause a myriad of issues. Um, you may end up with uh, symptoms of muscle and joint stiffness or pain, mental and physical fatigue, generalized weakness, skin issues, organ dysfunction, and even stones, kidney and gallbladder stones. So I want to share with you one of my self-care practices regarding water. So I begin my day with at least eight ounces of water. Well, first I brush my teeth and do the usual things, but then eight ounces of water. I consider water the elixir of life. And I suggest room temperature or warm is the best. Consider overnight our body becomes dehydrated. We don't take anything in during the night usually. So we need to replenish the water. So I see water, this first glass of water, as an internal shower to prime all the body's pumps. Then 20 minutes before each meal, I, I do another glass of water, at least eight ounces. And the reason for that is water at mealtime dilutes the digestive juices. Now, me too. You know, I eat something and it's crumbly or chewy and I drink a little bit. That's, a, that's all right. But I'm talking about the major amount. Most people, if you go to a restaurant, there's water and they're drinking it constantly and re refilling. So it would be better to start with that water while you're waiting for your food. Drink as much as you can and then little bits during the meal. So because water dilutes the digestive juices can cause all kinds of digestive issues. So again, water between meals is fine because you're not eating. And one hour before bedtime. Now this isn't, uh, these are not strict rules, they're just guidelines. As I said, sometimes I drink water right before I go to bed because I feel like I, I need it. And I might get up and have to go to the bathroom, but fall back to sleep and it's not an issue with me. So adjust that according to your needs. So if in doubt about what's going on with you, drink water. If you're not feeling strong, sharp, present, drink water. If you're moody, hungry, sore, think water and drink it. <laughs> or if it's more like anxiety, fear, overwhelm, Think about breathing. We talked about breathing. We'll be talking more about breathing. But breath is very important for anxiety and fear. And then drink the water too. So when you're stressed out and you don't know what to do, have some water. And I want to share this quote by Ben Franklin. When the well's dry, we know the worth of water. So water, water, water. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about my guest. My, my guest is uh, Teresa McKee. What I love about Teresa is that she is a fearless woman and a visionary. She dreams of a world where self-care is not seen as selfish, but actually as an act of generosity. She dreams of a world that is dynamic, balanced, and integrated a world where we truly embrace the power to manifest our dreams. This is her fearless vision, as expressed in the best-selling book, Fearless Women, Visions of a New World. Okay, we'll be coming back. This is Barbara Rose, host of Welcome in Wellness, and we are on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio live. We will be meeting Teresa and exploring more holistic self-care practices in a moment. 
Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. I'm excited to be back. I'm Barbara Rose. I'm the host of Welcome in Wellness, and we are live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So I was talking about my guest who will come on in a few minutes. So more about Teresa Not only does she mentor coaches, healers, and business owners, she is also a stress care and self-care expert. I don't even remember when I met Teresa, but she changed my life. She has been a colleague, friend. She has taken a few of my Reiki classes. I've taken her classes. We've taken classes together. We are seen all over Knoxville together, working and trying to empower women. So... Uh, which leads into our topic, bridging uh, from stress care to simple self-care. Last time, last week, the topic was stress care, the first component of real self-care. So we're going into, uh, going into this in more depth. How do I Thank have... You, less- oh, yes, Teresa, please. Join us. <laughs> cool. Uh, I love this topic, bridging from stress care to simple self-care. Because a lot of people think self-care has to be hard or difficult. So I love very simple, easy, yet profound ways to, to really support self-care. Uh, a lot of my clients really ask me uh, and have questions on, how do I have less pain? How do I have less stress? How do I have less fear? And... So that I, I'm in those waters every day. How do you have less pain, less stress, less fear? Another thing, another area where I work with clients, uh, a lot of questions they ask me is, how do you really shift that raging inner credit, that inner doubter, that sometimes uh, we call that dis- despairing doubter that's full of gloom and despair, and how do I shift that uh, victim mindset? So sometimes I call stress care survival care. When the inner critic and inner doubter get riled up, when you have all that stress and all that fear, that really could derail us. So sometimes I call stress care survival care because it really sure does feel like it at times. It's really important to de-stress before you distress. And remember, stress care is the first component of real self-care. I'd like to mention some things about self-care for a moment. Self-care, both practical and profound, while important for everybody, is really vital for teachers, parents, caregivers, you know, healers and leaders, uh, not only so they don't burn out, but so they stay sharp and at the top of their craft. Um, So how do we really create that bridge from stress care to simple self-care? Really, how do we do this? Uh, How do we fill that gap? 
Uh, how do we go from just surviving to actually thriving? Isn't that the big question? And uh, yes. is that even possible? Is that even possible? Barbara, I know, you, you know, there's, there's the classic, you know, image of uh, the burned out nurse, the burned out folks in the medical profession, all the stuff they're going through. So is it even possible to go from surviving to thriving when you're stressed out at work, stressed out with home life, uh, you know, sometimes just driving in traffic, all that increases the stress. So uh, start asking these questions. What personal practices can I put in place that make a real difference and get real results that actually work for me? There's all these practices out there that can actually be overwhelming, and it's really finding out what works for you. Uh, those customized personal practices that really get you through, that take you from surviving to thriving, and they'll be different. Barbara has some wonderful personal practices. I have different ones, and then we have a lot of personal practices in common. So uh, we'll be sharing some of those in a little bit. So really focus on what personal practices can I put in place that make a real difference and get real results for me. Uh, so we're going to offer several tools and techniques and see what's a good fit. If it's not a good fit for you, hey, pick something else. Uh, another great question that gets a little bit more from surviving to thriving is uh, how, do you, how do I really create and sustain dynamic balance? What does balance look like for you? Uh, how can you move through transitions and change more gracefully with less chaos and stress? So how can you move through transitions and change more gracefully and with more ease? How's that sound? Uh, also ask yourself, what personal practices can I put in place so I can use my gifts to make a difference in the world? I'm all about purpose work and really making a difference and, and bringing in, you know, a, a better way of being into the planet. Uh, the short answer for all these questions, believe it or not, is you care more for yourself. Because when you take care of yourself, you're better able to take care of others. We're better able to take care of each other. Our families are stronger. Our communities are stronger. Our countries are stronger. So what I love about this radio show and what Barbara's work is in the world is she's really showing you how to get this done, how to care for yourself, what are holistic self-care practices, and giving lots of tools and techniques and practices so you can really explore what works for you. Uh, so the question uh, I want to pose is, what do you do for stress care? What do you do for simple self-care? Question is, do you do different things for stress care than self-care? Or really, do you do the same things but differently? So we were asking some people questions about that before the show, and I'd like to share some of the answers and some of the comments they had. Uh, Dig Schoolwell of Boulder, uh, he's a philosopher. He's practiced Tai Chi for well over 40 years. He had a couple comments about Tai Chi that I thought were very valuable. Uh, for 41 years, he's been doing Tai Chi, and that it really works for him. He adds, for those who don't know about Tai Chi, that Tai Chi is constant flow. With steps and shifting, we carry a relaxation through movement and also throughout the day. He finds it very soothing and effective. Uh, for him, Tai Chi is a daily practice, and from repetition, it's like really sinking in to the bosom of an old friend. If he detects stress, he's definitely looking for a place to do his form of Tai Chi. Uh, so I really encourage you, if you haven't tried Tai Chi, you may want to check locally and see what, what's going on with that. So thank you to Diggs of Boulder. Uh, another wonderful person, uh, Judy Sinclair, who's an artist, Artists have their own creative stress. It, it's uh, fascinating. Uh, for stress, what Judy Sinclair, who's a wonderful collage artist, what she does is she listens to instr instrumental music while she's working on her collage paintings. Uh, she also plays her singing bowls before she starts, and uh, that helps. the singing bowls help calm her. She finds that her stress goes away when she does her art, when she's listening to music and playing her singing bowls. Uh, when I, when in conversation asking what sound, what she listens to, she likes to listen to soundtracks from movies like The Da Vinci Code, uh, The Return of the King from The Lord of the Rings, and a Baroque Garden for concentration. So see what music 
feed your soul. And uh, we've got a few others that we'll share. So start thinking and making your list of what do you do for stress care and what do you do for simple self-care. And I'm Teresa McKee. Thank you. All right. This, this is Welcome and Wellness from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back with more. Thank you. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Hello, this is Welcome in Wellness. I'm your host, Barbara Rose, and we're brought to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We have Teresa McKee on the line. She spoke last week, and she's uh, my guest this week. I'm so honored and and excited to have her on. And I will turn the, the mic over to you, Teresa. Thanks, Barbara. Uh Earlier, we've, uh, we've polled some of the audience and asked them kind of, what do you do for stress care and what do you do for simple self-care? So we've mentioned Tai Chi. We've mentioned music. We've had some other uh, wonderful comments. Heather Rial has shared uh, that for her, she reduces stress by walking her dog, and while on the walk, she really pays attention to nature around her, to the trees, to the blooming flowers, the clouds, the smells, all of that. For her really moving her body, really helps her de-stress. Another movement person is Esther Johnson. She's actually a holistic nurse. So she loves hiking. That really does it for her. Right now she's suffering an ankle injury, so she's not able to hike. So she's using a lot of visualization. She loves cooking delicious food, gardening, and being creative. Uh, And then some people, you know, with stress care, uh, talking about how stress shows up with people, We've had some comments about how they experience stress. They have panic, meltdowns, and they they deal with a lot of stress by through avoidance by sleeping. So when you're dealing with grief and various other things, those are, you know, a lot of those are very normal ways that we deal with stress. Uh, and we had we had some folks sharing, you know, that they really haven't been dealing well with their stress and doing their self care and stress care for a while. So it really can build up. So I encourage you, if you're feeling stressed out, freaked out, overwhelmed, you know, really swimming in the chaos, uh, do some of the stress care tools and the self-care tools and really let those support you. Uh, Kathleen Uller, uh, she shares that she unplugs. She goes out in nature, does yoga, meditation, and eats ice cream. So I love it when they're playful and do fun things for uh, stressing and de-stressing. Uh, so, uh, so thank you guys for letting us know some of your comments. Uh, to review for a moment, uh, from what we did last week, we talked about breathing. 
So let's review. When you're stressed and don't know what to do, remember to breathe. And we'll share some other tools about breathing in a moment. Uh, when you don't know what to do, remember to breathe. Take a breather. Take care of yourself. Uh, remember to take care of yourself because you can't pour from an empty cup. Drink from the well. Be, be well served. And I love Barbara Rose calls her home where she does a lot of her tr- retreats and workshops, the well. So coming to the well to be filled up. But one of the ways in which to breathe that I really like that helps reduce stress is uh, when people are stressed out, we tend to hold our breath. We catch our breath, we hold our breath, and we actually forget to exhale. Uh, There was a movie many years ago called Waiting to Exhale. It's like we don't feel safe enough to even really fully exhale that drama and trauma and let go of it. So a lot of it is really focusing on the exhale to reduce stress. So I want you to take a moment and inhale through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. We're going to do that for a few moments. Inhaling through the nose, deep sigh exhale, like the sound ha, when you exhale through the mouth. So inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. And really on that deep exhale, it's almost like a sigh If you were giving a word to the exhale, it would be ha, like H-A, inhaling, exhaling. And on that exhale, focus on letting go of any tension in your body, any stress, letting go of what no longer serves. So one of the things when I'm under stress, I remember my breath, go, am I holding my breath? Have I caught my breath? And remember to exhale, inhaling through the nose and Letting that go. That's, the exhale is a beautiful way to disconnect from the drama and trauma when you've kind of uh, been overwhelmed for a moment. So please remember that hot breath, that deep exhale, that deep sighing exhale is a great way to shift pain, to shift stress. So you, it, you can imagine that you're breathing, for instance, if your knee is having issues. You can inhale to your knee. And then do that deep exhale from the knee. (sighs) Breathing to and through the pain to shift it. Uh, This works for aches, for tension, for tightness, and for uh, for pain. So I encourage you to use the hot breath and really experiment with it. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the breath. You do that for a little while until it shifts, and then start breathing in, in through the nose, out through the nose. Uh, it's really important, I think, to uh, have your basic normal breathing be in through the nose, out through the nose. The nose serves some wonderful function to filter the air that you're breathing and get out impurities. So it's really important to breathe in through your nose. And overall, breathe into your nose and out through the mouth. So for this one, inhaling through the nose, deep sigh, exhale, to let go of stress, <clears throat> pain, fear, anxiety, Panic attacks, uh, doubt and critic when they're running them up. This is a great breath to do. Uh, another breath for stress and pain, we touched on this last time, so I'll review it briefly. It's left side breathing. So take your hand, close your right nostril, and breathe in and out through your left. Breathing in and out through the left side is a calming, cooling breath. It relaxes the body, so inhale through the left side, slowing the breath down with each inhale and exhale, slowing the breath down and following the breath. Inhaling as the wave comes up, exhaling as the wave comes down, following the breath with your own rhythm, inhaling as the wave comes up, pausing at the top of the wave, Exhaling as the wave comes down. This is a calming, cooling breath. Great for the summertime when it's hot outside. Great for cooling the heating emotions, be they anxiety, irritation, anger, all of that things that quite often when we're stressed out, we feel those feelings. So that's left side breathing. That's a nicer view. 
and in a moment we'll teach you right side breathing. And I'm Teresa McKee with Real Soul Hair. All right, thank you, uh, Teresa. So this is uh, w- Welcome in Wellness. We're live from BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and I'm your host, Barbara Rose. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. We're back. This is Barbara Rose, and welcome in wellness. We're live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And my guest today is Teresa McKee. And we were just doing, she was showing us, reviewing last week's left-sided breathing. And now she's going to teach us another breathing technique. Take it away, Teresa. Thank you, Barbara. One of the things I love about breath work is The breath is free, and it's with you wherever you are. So when you're stressed out, overwhelmed, the breath is with you. You've always got it with you. So remember, when you're stressed out, take a breather and take care of yourself. So we've done the ha breath to shift stress and pain. We've reviewed left side breathing that we did last week, and those are great for stress. They're also good for basic self-care to help you relax, to go to bed at night, to relax when you want to sleep, and to just settle in. Uh, What I'd like to share with you next is right side breathing. People ask me, okay, left side breathing is a calming, cooling breath, so what happens if you breathe in and out through the right side? So let's try that. So close the left nostril, and we'll breathe in and out through the right nostril. Inhaling and exhaling at your own pace. Slowing the breath down with each inhale and exhale. Imagine an ocean wave, inhaling as the wave comes up, exhaling as the wave comes down, breathing in and out at your own pace through the right side, through the right nostril. Left nostril breathing is a calming, cooling breath. Right side breathing is a warming breath. It helps you have clarity. It helps you focus on details. It helps you with linear thinking. So right side breathing helps open up the left side of the brain, and left side breathing helps open up the right side of the brain. So continue breathing in through the right side, inhaling as the wave comes up, exhaling as the wave comes down. Right side breathing is a great one to increase energy. So if you have that kind of flagging energy about 3 in the afternoon, if you just feel like, oh, I just can't move, I just don't have any energy, try right side breathing. Uh, Right side breathing is great to do instead of a cup of coffee or instead of uh, 
mellow yellow or any of the, the caffeinated drinks. Right side breathing is very energizing. If you're driving and you're uh, late at night and, you know, needing to stay energized, you can do right side breathing for that. So right side breathing is a warming breath, great to do when you're feeling cold, and it's great to do to uh, to uh, really increase clarity and attention to detail. So you've learned several techniques, the ha breath, left side breathing, and right side breathing. And uh, right si- uh, breath work is so good for stress care and for self-care. I love learning one tool that has many applications. And now Barbara Rose is going to share with you the energy fountain. Take it away, Barbara. Yeah. Okay, well, I want to ask you a question. So could you, if you were in stress mode, start with the left side breathing and do that for a while? And then if you feel, because I think when we practiced one time, somebody felt really kind of uh, low energy. So then they could do the right side breathing. Can you just speak on that before we move on? Shifting from left side to right side. But what happens when people are doing left side breathing Quite often they get very snuggly, kind of like they, and, and very relaxed like they want to take a nap. So, so when you kind of uh-huh. get that feeling relaxed in, you can shift to right side breathing, and then the effect is very balancing. So you're relaxed and alert. There's that whole thing, be like bamboo, strong and flexible like bamboo. How are you strong and flexible and adaptable? And uh, so love the breathing for that. So uh, if you kind of check in, you'll know when to shift. So they're great to do together. What other questions do you have about that, Barbara? Well, that, well that's great. That's what I wanted to know. It's, it's so if, if people are not sure which one to do, just do one. And if it doesn't do what you need, do the other side. I had trouble well, with my dyslexia. Well, the other thing is left, left side breathing starts with an L. And so left side breathing is the relaxing one. A lot of people think when they want to relax, they lie down. Lying down also starts with an L. A lot of people use lavender to relax. So pair all your L's, lavender, lying down, and left side breathing. And that's how you kind of remember which one to relax. Uh, Most folks are so stressed out and overwhelmed today in society that I recommend starting with the left side breathing. And if you're only going to do one, do the left side breathing. Thanks, Barbara. Great question. Great. Thank you, Teresa. And also, I just wanted to tell people that they can reach us through the uh, BBM Global Network has a comment section if you have questions, or you can go to my Facebook page, which is Rose Wellness Network. My name is Barbara Rose, so you can find us that way. Or also, I have a website. It's uh, www rosewellnesshealthcoaching.com so if you connect with me some way and you have a question about any of these techniques or any of the information please shoot us a, a, a question or comment all right so last week we talked about the energy fountain so i'm going to review that and it's a brain gym technique i've used for years and years uh I so I and I teach it to everyone too. It's a really quick way. Again, a breath is with you. Um, with this one, you use your hands too. So there's one more component to it besides plugging up one side of your your uh, nostril. So what you're going to do is relax your hands either down at uh, at your side or in your lap, and then you put your fingers together and form kind of a cup. And sometimes with kids, especially, I have them imagine that there's something below them that they want to smell. So flowers or with kids, they usually pick chocolate chip cookies or peanut butter cookies they want to smell. So you bring your hands up as you take in your breath up to about your mouth. Let your hands open up to the sides and then come down. So you're actually lifting energy from your central energy channel, the central channel there, which goes up in the front and down in the back. So three times, I always like odd number of times because that helps to shift things. So we'll do it again. Hands down, cupped, and you're going to bring something up. You can even think of bringing up water or the energy, the breath. And out to the side. And then back down again, a deep breath in, bring your hands up to about your mouth. 
letting the hands float to the side and then down. And I find this to act fairly, fairly quickly, so I use it quite often. I, I've taught it to people, as I said, when I worked in the dialysis unit, they loved it. They would just... And I um, just flashed their hands up and down like they were hot, but it was actually to bring up their energy. So I am Barbara Rose, host of Welcome and Wellness. We're live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkali, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Hello, this is Barbara Rose. Welcome in Wellness, and we're brought to you live by BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So I had just uh, um, had you go through reviewing the energy fountain, which is bringing the energy up. It's uh, um, a way of lifting your energy, especially if you're you know, instead of drinking coffee, you you have your breath with a, with you all the time. So you're bringing up energy in the in the midline area up to about your mouth and letting your hands fall to the side. I recommend doing it three times. So now I'm going to teach you the opposite. Like uh, Teresa just showed you right. Uh, nostril breathing and left nostril breathing. This is fountain up and then a disconnect doing energy fountain down. And so the down is to disconnect. So what we're going to do is the opposite. So you're going to breathe out. You're going to have your hands at your mouth. And it's, it kind of reminds me of her ha breath. So you take in a breath and then you exhale with your mouth open and you bring your hands down. I sometimes make a noise, so I'm kind of doing a combination. I think it's after I learned her ha breath. So, and you do that three times. And what that does is it disconnects you from whatever's going on. So if you heard some bad news, you heard someone talk about you, you heard uh, you just not feeling good for whatever reason, you're running late, you're frustrated. It's a way of disconnecting. Okay, let's reboot here, disconnect from that energy. This is not what I want to engage in. So you breathe down and exhale down and then you, you breathe normally up. So you wouldn't go up and down with this. So it's just down and you would do it three times. When you feel you're sufficiently disconnected from whatever was going on, then you could bring your energy back up with doing the uh, energy fountain. So you would breathe in with the hands up going down the midline. So it's um, like 
uh, the left and nostril left and right nostril breathing one is to bring your energy up and the other one is to disconnect and it, it's pretty easy to remember disconnect toward the ground and um, I use this quite frequently <laughs> even sometimes I if you do it on a regular basis after a while all you have to do is breathe out and it's like you've already disconnected you can skip the putting your hands I do this when I'm driving and somebody cuts me off I just <sighs> and then let go and then Breathe in. So you always have to breathe in, though. You don't just let go and stop breathing. So, and this is another way you could use this is to relax before you go to sleep. I taught my mother-in-law this exercise. She was having a lot of difficulty sleeping, and so she would be lying down, and she would breathe out three times or so, and, um, and she would feel more relaxed. So I have one more technique to... Uh, show you how to disconnect and it's something I teach when I teach Reiki a a version of it and it's called dry brushing it's a little bit more involved but I know you can do it so you put your right hand on your left shoulder and you cross it's like crisscross your heart think of crisscross your heart so you're going to cross your heart one time moving your hand down to your right hip so that's the first cross you take your left hand you put it on the right shoulder and cross the left sho- right shoulder to left hip. And one more time with the right hand on the left shoulder, cross. So Chris, cross your heart <laughs> three times. Everything is three. Three, you can't go wrong with three. So again, right hand, left shoulder, cross your heart, go to your hip. Left hand, right shoulder, cross your heart, go to your hip. And one more time with the right hand, on the left shoulder, cross your heart, go to your hip. And it's really a nice way of um, removing yourself from a situation. Sometimes I need to walk away and I'll just do that and it's a disconnect. If I were doing a Reiki session on someone or any other healing technique, I may do that just to indicate I am done with giving energy to a situation or, or, or a treatment too, because at some point we need to disconnect and allow the empowered person to move on. So I love uh, both of those techniques and they're pretty easy to do. And again, just shoot us an, uh, a message uh, either through uh, BBM Global Network, uh, the tune in radio uh, area that has comments or visit me at Rose Wellness Network Facebook page. My name is Barbara Rose and it's Rose Wellness Network or through my website, rosewellnesshealthcoaching.com. So now, Teresa, you're going to talk a little bit more about stress and breathing. Barbara, I love that dry brushing technique. It really helps disconnect from the drama and trauma and the stressful situation. So I love having all these tools on the tool belt. Uh, me too. Thank you for teaching me these years ago. They've made a big difference. Uh, but I want people Same to uh, remember. Yeah, what? I'm sorry. You're Same with awesome. me, Teresa. She's taught me so much. We learn from, from each other, so we have so many options. I love options. Okay. Take it away. Well, I love options and choice. Uh, what I love about Barbara is she's able to teach folks how to move the inner energy manually through what she's learned with Brain Gym and how to move the energy subtly, which all is just wonderful uh, to lead a, lead a very healthy uh, well be, life of well-being and health and vitality. Uh, so remember, when you're stressed out and don't know what to do, breathe. Remember, stress care is actually the first component of real self-care. So all of these techniques work for stress. Now, if you're not stressed out and you do them, they work to really replenish and do your self-care. So I love these tools that work several different ways. So stress care is the first component of real self-care, and you can bridge from stress care to self-care using the same tools and techniques. So I love that part. Uh, To really be fearless and step into what you're here to do, you really do need to stress less. To fear less, stress less, and that's one reason why it's so important 
to bridge from stress care to simple self-care. Self-care really gives that solid foundation to have courage, to stand in your power and to self-empower, to really be brave, be bold, and be fearless. So that fearless self-care is a solid foundation for authentic power. And really, without self-care, you can't sustain your work in the world. Without self-care, the capacity to serve, to love, to live is really diminished. So it really all comes back to caring for yourself. When you care for yourself, you create a foundation that allows you to care for others, and caring for others creates a foundation for caring for the world. So I really do dream of a world where self-care is not seen as selfish. So my wish for you is to be brave, be bold, and be fearless. Thank you, Teresa. This is Barbara Rose. Welcome in Wellness, and we're live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome in Wellness. This is Barbara Rose, your host, and we're live via BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Uh, Teresa, I, I want you to say your dream again because it just, I, I couldn't grasp the whole thing. It was so beautiful. So if you would tell us that again and. Be happy to, Barbara. Really, when it comes to bridging stress care and self-care, it all comes back to caring for yourself. I dream of a world where self-care is not seen as selfish, but that act of generosity. I dream of a world that is dynamic, balanced, and integrated, and a world where we truly embrace the power to manifest our dreams. So my wish for you is to be brave, be bold, and be fearless. May you stress less and fear less. And may you fear less and dream more. May you be bold with sharing your purpose work and sharing your purposeful message. And may you live your purpose now. I'm Teresa McKee with Real Soul Care, and I really wish that we all would step into our purpose work, step into our calling, and make this world a world that works for everyone. Thank you, Barbara. I so appreciate this opportunity. Oh, thank you, Teresa. It's such a pleasure. So to wrap up this show, remember when you're stressed and don't know what to do, have some water. It's not going to hurt anything. When you're stressed and don't know what to do, shift your energy through movement. You can do any one of these techniques we taught you or just get up and move around. As someone said, when they get stressed, they take a walk. I I take a daily walk and it helps me with de-stress. 
So every day, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier, every day, things to welcome in wellness. Give gratitude every day. Take a life-affirming action every day. Nurture and nourish yourself every day. Just do something for you. And remember, it's not selfish. It's actually an act of generosity, as Teresa said. And wiggle and giggle as much as you can. There, These are the everyday things to welcome in wellness. All right. And my wish for you. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Teresa, for being on the show. Welcome in wellness. And my wish for you is may gratitude and unconditional love feed your radiant heart and permeate all you do always. This, my name is Barbara Rose. I, my website for more information about me is Rose Wellness Network. Rose Wellness Health Coaching, I'm sorry, Rose Wellness Health Coaching.com, or my Facebook page is Rose Wellness Network. And this is Welcome in Wellness. It's been a, a pleasure to have you join us. I, I want to see if, uh, if Teresa has anything more to share that's on her heart to share with us before we, we complete this show. Teresa, any last words? Yes, I really do want to share. There is hope for health. A lot of people give up hope. And one of the goals of this show is to really have people know that uh, holistic self-care is possible and that uh, you can have hope uh, for real health, real health and well-being. Remember to breathe, drink your water, and move that energy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Barbara. I love it. Thank you, Teresa. And Teresa will be back next week, too. This is Barbara Rose, host of Welcome in Wellness. It's been a pleasure to be with you tonight. We are live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Come back next week. We have more to share with you. This has been Welcome in Wellness with your host, Barbara Rose. Come join the conversation of inspiration, positive change, and guidance without judgment on the next episode of Barbara Rose's Welcome in Wellness. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.